It's a new era of pioneers, star sailors, thinkers, and adventurers. Go, 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 all right, go, go for lunch. Our destiny is always to go and see what's further and what's next. That was awesome. Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Ellington Field at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston. I'm Joe Acaba. Thank you. I'm Joe Acaba, Chief of NASA's Astronaut Office, and I'm joined by Norm Knight, Director of NASA's Flight Operations Directorate. We are here today with a mission to introduce the world to the crew of Artemis II. Four names, four explorers, four of my friends answering the call to once more rocket away from Earth and chart a course around the moon. Well, Joe, I... I agree with you, Joe, but uh, we're going to need a few more astronauts, I think, to get this started. So everyone, please help me welcome our astronaut corps. Yeah. Look at that sea of blue. Let's give them another round of applause. Yeah. Our mission calls for four names. It's difficult to pick just four from a group that by its very definition attracts the best and the brightest that humanity has to offer. The astronaut corps our entire astronaut corps will be the forerunners as humanity looks to find its place among the stars. So that while we may be recognizing four individuals today, I want to thank the entire astronaut corps for their dedication and sacrifice as we ask them to strap into our current and future spacecraft, take those next steps to do the things that are hard so that others might follow behind them. Yeah. Now, some of you might be scanning the astronaut faces, trying to see who is missing and still hidden backstage. Well, know this, your Artemis II crew members are already here in the room with you. But 
Because I love you all, I'm going to give you one hint. I am not one of them. <laughs> Don't be so happy about that. With Artemis 1, we set out to prove that the hardware was ready. The SLS was prepared to launch our astronauts skyward. That Orion was equipped to carry them to the moon and back safely again. Artemis 1 was a resounding success, and Artemis 2 will leverage that by putting humans in the loop, executing operations in the critical path, leading to new footprints on the lunar surface. This flight will be challenging, but we face that challenge with the confidence that the people working beside us are up to the task. Houston is home for us, and it's where we'll plan, train, and ultimately fly the Artemis II mission. To give us a proper Houston welcome, please join me in bringing out JSC Center Director Vanessa White. Thank you, Joe. Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone here today to Ellington Field. NASA's Johnson Space Center is home of America's astronaut corps, mission operations, and foundational human space flight programs. This past December, we witnessed history as the Orion capsule journeyed on a 1.4 million mile journey around the moon and back. And the excitement continues as we prepare for Artemis II for the first time with crew. We've made many giant leaps in the past 60 years fulfilling President Kennedy's goal of landing a person on the moon. And today, we stand on the shoulders of giants as we reach farther into the stars and push forward to the moon once again and on to Mars. These individuals of Artemis II crew will be the first humans to fly to the vicinity of the moon in more than 50 years. Yes. take a moment to recognize those who paved the way, our Apollo legends who are with us via the NASA Alumni League. Will you please wave? We're, we are also honored to be joined by some special guests. Please help me welcome NASA leadership Administrator Bill Nelson, Deputy Administrator Pam Melroy, Associate Administrator Bob Cabana, and many of our NASA leaders who are from headquarters and all across our agency. We're also pleased to be joined by the international community. Representing the Canadian Space Agency is Minister Champagne.
Through our international partnerships under Artemis, we're building a global alliance that explores deep space for the benefit of all. I'd also like to welcome the following elected officials. Senator Ted Cruz, Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee, Congressman Brian Babin, Congresswoman Lizzie Fletcher, the Comptroller of Texas, Glenn Hager, the Mayor Pro Tem of Houston, Dave Martin, and many other elected officials. Thank you. We're very appreciative of your continued support. Last but certainly not least, I'd like to give a shout out to the NASA workforce and all of those across the agency who came together to make this a very exciting moment and this moment in history happen. So thank you to our workforce. <laughs> Joining us Joining us today are directors of our NASA centers. Will you please stand? So my colleagues. <laughs> this mission represents the culmination of years of hard work and dedication by NASA and its partners. This is an exciting time for those working on the International Space Station, commercial crew, commercial LEO destinations, as we continue using those platforms and conduct deep space exploration with the Orion, Gateway, Human Landing System, and EVA programs. Together, our team of civil servants and contractors are enabling the success of the Artemis program. And this is only the beginning. For the students with us today from Houston and Clear Creek Independent School Districts and those watching, you are the future explorers, the future scientists, engineers, inventors, and mathematicians of the Artemis generation. <laughs> We will explore the frontiers of space and push the boundaries of what's possible. You may walk on the moon or be one of the many explorers who venture onward to Mars. We're all looking forward to you being a part of our mission, and I can't wait for you and everyone to meet our Artemis II crew. Thank you. The Artemis program is guided by decades of experience from sending humans to outer space. We're building new rockets, new spacecraft, new communication systems, and new ways to operate in deep space. But it isn't the technology that is changing. We've also learned that in order to go farther, we have to go together. Please join me in welcoming Minister Francois-Philippe Champagne. He's with us here from Canada, one of our steadfast partners in human spaceflight, ready to send one of their own to the moon. Thank you, Minister. Thank, thank you very you. much. Well, thank you, Joe, and uh, good morning, everyone. Bonjour, tout le monde. C'est un grand privilège d'être ici pour représenter le Canada. What an honor to be here today to represent Canada on this historic day. In his recent visit to Ottawa, President Biden said this, Canada and the U.S. can do big things because we do them together. And indeed, indeed, 50 years after the end of the Apollo missions, we are going back to the moon. Back to the moon. Think about that for a moment. The moon. As Minister Responsible for the Canadian Space Agency, I know Canadians could not be more proud. Proud to have for the first time a Canadian astronaut who will travel to deep space as part of the Artemis II mission. <laughs> proud that we will be contributing to the future of the Lunar Gateway with the unique Canadian innovation, Canada Arm 3. That Canada will design, build, and operate a lunar utility vehicle to support operations on the lunar space. And proud 
of the 60-year plus of collaboration between NASA and the Canadian Space Agency, a partnership which is fueled by bold initiatives and scientific excellence. And most importantly, Canadians could not be more proud to share this moment with our American partners and friends which are here today in Houston. We would not be here today without the friendship and close partnership between our two nations. Because this is more than just about going back to the moon. This is about investing in the future. This is about possibilities. This is about seizing the opportunities of the space economy, from health to food security to climate change and much more. So as we embark together on this new space era, let's seize the moment. Let's be ambitious and together let's inspire the young people watching us to reach for the stars and become the next generation of scientists, engineers and explorers. Merci tout le monde. Thank you everyone. Thank you everyone. He pumped me up. That was nice. Next up is a group of people who need little introduction. Our agency leaders who know firsthand what it takes to fly in space. Please join me in welcoming NASA Administrator Bill Nelson, Deputy Administrator Pam Melroy, and Associate Administrator Bob Cabana. Hey everybody, members of the NASA family and the Canadian Space Agency, <clears throat> my colleagues, uh, my former colleagues, members of Congress, members of the Artemis generation, we are going. <laughs> Pam, Bob and I operate as a team, as a crew. And we are here today to introduce you to the crew that will uh, launch next year, 2024, to another celestial body. The largest, most powerful rocket in the world is going to propel them onward and upward into the heavens. And they fly to the moon. This is Artemis's Artemis II mission. It's a mission that is significant in many ways. It's a demonstration of our ability to push the boundaries of human achievement. It's a testament to the underwavering passion of the team that will make it possible. And it's a message to the world. We choose to go back to the moon and then on to Mars, and we're going to do it together. Because in the 21st century, NASA explores the cosmos with international partners. We will unlock new knowledge and understanding. We've always dreamed about what more is ahead. Why? Because it's in our DNA. It's part of us. It's who we are as adventurers, as explorers, as frontiers people. And throughout history, humankind has gazed up at this celestial body, the moon, with wonder. And the space program propelled the moon to the forefront of culture and consciousness. It galvanized a historic effort that we are now the stewards of. The moon is a symbol of our can-do spirit. And over the course of the Artemis missions, the first woman and the first person of color will take giant leaps on the lunar surface. It's been more than a half century since astronauts journeyed to the moon. Well, folks, that's about to change. 
The mission to the moon will launch four pioneers, but it will carry more than astronauts. Artemis II will carry the hopes of millions of people around the world. It will carry the aspirations of the NASA family who glance up at the moon every night knowing their efforts will return us to the moon. And it will carry the dreams of students who burn the midnight oil in libraries and laboratories, preparing one day to support an Artemis mission. And it will carry the inspiration of the children who imagine themselves soaring in the skies. We will show what is possible when we dare to reach distant cosmic shores. The crew was selected by the Director of Flight Operations, Norm Knight, and the Chief Astronaut, Joe Acaba, and under the supervision of the Johnson Space Center Director, Vanessa Weiss. Will you all please join us up here? And I want to acknowledge again our Canadian partners, Minister Champagne, Francois Philippe, will you please come up, please? <laughs> the Artemis II crew represents thousands of people working tirelessly to bring us to the stars. This is their crew. This is our crew. This is humanity's crew. May I introduce them to you all? She's an engineer who got her start at Goddard and is no stranger to breaking records, logging the longest continuous space flight ever by a woman, your mission specialist, Christina Hammett Koch. He is a Master of Science in Physics, an F-18 pilot, and a Canadian astronaut. Your mission specialist, Jeremy Hansen. He's a naval aviator and test pilot that's flown over 40 different aircraft, most recently the first operational commercial crew mission. Your Artemis II pilot, Victor Glover.
He's a decorated naval aviator, test pilot, and leader of the highest character, your Artemis II commander, Reed Wiseman. Ladies and gentlemen, your Artemis II crew. Thank you, Administrator Nelson. And the hard part's over now, right? Yes, sir. All right, good. Well, Reed, Victor, Christina, and Jeremy, I am so proud to have you four standing here in this moment. You are the right crew for this mission. You are the future of Artemis, and it looks bright with you at the controls. As head of flight operations, I have the privilege of getting to know each and every astronaut. The best part of my job, the best part of my job, is that I'm surrounded by people who inspire, who give hope to those that might follow in their footsteps. Christina, with a work ethic and willingness to lend a hand that only someone who spent their summers working on a farm growing up can have, your relentless drive is unmatched. You have already made your mark in the remote corners of our planet you have already been in the history books as a record-setting astronaut. You're a trailblazer and a role model for every generation to come. You've already been advocating and uplifting children in your community, and I know that you are just getting started. And as the only professional engineer in the crew, <laughs> I... <laughs> I know who Mission Control will be calling on when it's time to fix something on board. So uh, we appreciate you. Victor, you wanted to be a hundred different things when you grew up, but I can say I'm truly thankful you ended up as a Navy pilot and an astronaut. Like so many, seeing other astronauts take flight planted the seed. And when you heard Pam Melroy speak at a test pilot conference, that was the moment you decided to apply. So Pam, thank you for inspiring others. Victor, you were the first person in your family to graduate from college. And you always talk about how much of the love and support of those around you made your dreams possible. I can honestly say I have never met anyone as determined as you are to spread that same love and support until everyone who passes into your orbit is better for it. You overcame every obstacle that came your way. Every obstacle. And then you dedicated your life to crushing those obstacles so that future generations can dream in a space unbounded. So thanks, Victor.
And finally, read and explore from the beginning. The forest of your youth might be smaller than the frontier that you're heading for now, but this was always you. It's what you were meant to be. You said for a time you wanted to be a train engineer, but I don't think trains go quite as fast as you need them to, so. <laughs> I wish the read of your youth, the ones that, you know, that you're dealing with bullies, dealing with the uncertainties of growing up, could meet you now. Meet the Reed who took his first jet for a spin and knew he was meant to soar across the skies. The Reed who found a home and family in the Navy and here at NASA. The Reed who led our astronauts into a new era of space exploration. And the Reed who will lead Artemis II from the Earth to the Moon and safely back home again. All of you will lead us into this brave new frontier. You are the Artemis generation. We are the Artemis generation. And with that, I will hand it back over to our neighbors to the north to talk about Jeremy, who will take his own place in history. Jeremy, I'm not going to talk about your early life or your lovely family. I'm not going to talk about your military service and everything you did as a fighter pilot, an F-18 fighter pilot. I'm not even going to talk about what you did as an astronaut and being the first Canadian to go on a lunar mission. I'm going to talk about your humanity and share with the world a story when I was with you at the Kennedy Space Center and I saw the power of the blue suit where we had hundreds of people storming to Jeremy. But Jeremy did one thing. He talked to each and every one. You took the time to talk to all the school children who were there, the Artemis generation, and they are here today and watching us. You took the time to inspire them. You took the time to thank all the teachers who are there to support our kids and, and teach them STEM skills that will bring them in exploration and being the future astronauts. You took the time to talk to each and every family that were coming from around the world and across North America. What I want to celebrate to you is your humanity. The fact that you have been inspiring not only us today, but keep inspiring humanity. To you, Jeremy, go Canada. Thank you, everyone. So here we have it. Reed, Victor, Christina, and Jeremy. Each of these adventurers has their own story, but together they represent our creed, e pluribus unum, out of many, one. This is the power of space. This is the power of our space program. It unites people. It brings them together. It brings parties together to explore, to discover, to dream. Together we will usher in a new era of exploration for a new generation of star sailors and dreamers, the Artemis generation. Together we are going to the moon, to Mars, and beyond. Give a big hand to our leadership. All right. You've heard from us, so now it's time to hear from your crew. 
I'm going to clear the stage, and I'm going to turn things over to our Artemis II commander, Reed Wiseman. All right, so I got to ask the school kids, is it hot in here today? Yeah. Woo! All right, and uh, I don't think that in my 14 years at NASA, we've had this many astronauts in one place at one time. I'm losing my voice. We're having so much fun backstage. It is great to see this diverse international group. Awesome to be here with you guys. <laughs> Woo! Uh, I'm going to hand it over to uh, the gentleman to my right here. Uh, Victor Glover, who has become, in the last few years, an amazing mentor to me. Uh, I didn't ask for it. He didn't ask for it. It just happened that way. Uh, one of the, the best leaders I know, one of the best dads, husbands, and friends, and, uh, and one of the most talented aviators I've ever met, Victor Glover. Thanks, Lee. I appreciate that. Wow, what a day. Look at all of this. This is amazing, isn't it? I mean, after all of that, I feel like Denzel Washington should be up here talking to you. <laughs> but you just got us. <laughs> I want to thank God for this amazing opportunity. And I, I think I speak for all of us. I want to thank our families for the amazing support. It is your love and support that has made this journey possible. Please give them a round of applause. And to all of the folks who made this celebration possible. Thank you for your hard work. They're the real ones in here sweating with all of us. <laughs> but this is a big day. We have a lot to celebrate. And it's so much more than the four names that have been announced. We need to celebrate this moment in human history. Because Artemis II is more than a mission to the moon and back. It's more than a mission that has to happen before we send people to the surface of the moon. It is the next step on the journey that gets humanity to Mars. Yeah, you can clap for that. That's good. And this, this crew, this crew will never forget that. Now, we have a lot of work to do before we get there, and we understand that. And when talking about that work, you, you may often hear people say, human spaceflight is a marathon, not a sprint. But we have watched the people that work so hard to make our mission possible, and I can tell you, it is a series of sprints. That's called a relay race. <laughs> Human spaceflight is like a relay race. And that baton has been passed generation to generation and from crew member to crew member. From the Gemini, Mercury, Gemini, Apollo, Apollo, Soyuz, Skylab, Mir, the shuttle, International Space Station, commercial crew, and, the, and now the Artemis missions. And we understand our role in that. And when we have the privilege of having that baton, we're gonna do our best to run a good race, to make you proud. I pray that God will bless this mission, but I also pray that we can continue to serve as a source of inspiration for cooperation and peace, not just between nations, but in our own nation. Thank you and God bless us all. Thanks, Victor. Awesome words. What I, uh, what I wanted to highlight for all of you today is, uh, well, you know, big picture when I step back, there are two reasons why a Canadian is going to the moon. That makes me smile when I say that. <laughs> uh, the first one is American leadership. It is not lost on any of us that the United States could choose to go back to the moon by themselves. But America has made a very deliberate choice over decades to curate a global team. And that, in my definition, is true leadership. A body, an entity that seeks out others who can contribute, right? allows them to rise up, lifts them up to make their contributions to bring their genius. That is American leadership. And as a Canadian, I am very proud to reflect that back to you, and I am grateful all Canada is, all of Canada is grateful for that global mindset and that leadership, so thank you. The second reason is 
Canada's can do attitude. For, <laughs> yeah. For decades now, literally thousands upon thousands of Canadians have risen to that challenge to bring real value to the international partnership with respect to space exploration, to bring real solutions. Our scientists, our engineers, the Canadian Space Agency, the Canadian Armed Forces, across government, all of our leadership working together under a vision to take step by step, and all of those have added up to this moment where a Canadian is going to the moon with our international partnership, and it is glorious. So at the end of it all, I am left in awe of being reminded what strong leadership, setting big goals with a passion to collaborate and a can-do attitude can achieve. And we are going to the moon together. Let's go. Thank you, uh, Victor. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, Reed. It is an honor to be here. I also want to thank our families, the trailblazers, our colleagues, and our leadership. My fellow astronauts know that one of the questions we get all the time is, are you excited? And I can tell you, when I think about this mission that's a relay race with international partners, it's also so awesome in and of itself. We are going to launch from Kennedy Space Center through the work of the Exploration Ground Systems team. We're going to hear the words, go for launch on top of the most powerful rocket NASA's ever made, the Space Launch System. And we're going to ride that rocket for eight minutes into Earth orbit. We're not going to go to the moon right away. We're going to stay in an amazing high orbit, reaching a peak of tens of thousands of miles while we test out all the systems on Orion and even see how it maneuvers in space. And then, if everything looks good, we're heading to the moon. It will be a four-day journey going a quarter of a million miles, continuing to test out every bit of Orion, going around the far side of the moon, heading home, going through the Earth's atmosphere at over 25,000 miles per hour and splashing down in the Pacific. So, am I excited? <laughs> Absolutely. But my real question is, are you excited? <laughs> I see you. And I ask that because the one thing I'm most excited about is that we are going to carry your excitement, your aspirations, your dreams with us on this mission, Artemis II your mission. I think I'm in pretty good hands. <laughs> um, Victor, Jeremy, Christina, thank you guys for those words. Absolutely awesome. Uh, we're just going to close. The crew would not close without just saying thank you. That is thank you to the NASA workforce. Thank you to our industry partners. Thank you to the Canadian Space Agency, everyone in Europe that's working for this. We got people in Airbus uh, working our European service module. This is a global effort, Artemis II, and it's only going to get larger with Artemis III and beyond as we get private spaceflight involved. SpaceX is building our lander for Artemis III. So to the NASA workforce, to our program managers, our center directors that are here, the amazing political support that we feel right now to bring our country together, to bring our entire world together to go explore, to get to Mars and beyond. We say a huge thank you. Uh, to the astronauts that are over here, a huge thank you. You are our friends, you are our families, you are our colleagues. And uh, I do want to highlight right now, there are seven folks on the International Space Station. Where's Joel? On Joel's International Space Station, orbiting our planet right now, three cosmonauts. 
three Americans and an Emirati from the United Arab Emirates. If any of you over there are looking for heroes today, go Google these folks, because they're our heroes. And I definitely want to call out our friend Frank Rubio, who uh, has already spent six months up there. And Frank is going to spend another six months due to a, uh, an issue with the spacecraft. So he'll be up in space for over an entire year. All right, that man is a hero, for sure. And then, and then Frank Rubio leads me to Deb Rubio, his wife and his four kids. That family, those are heroes. They are putting it out there and they are getting the job done and it is amazing. And she still gives us eggs fresh from her chickens at her farm whenever we go over there. I mean, it's totally awesome. The Rubio family is an amazing family. And that brings the four of us to our families who are in the audience with us. This is gonna be a relay race unlike any you've ever run. And we are so happy to have you with us. Thank you. There's three words that we keep saying in the three words that we keep saying in this Artemis program. We are going, and I want everybody to say it on three. One, two, three. We are going. That was awesome. I gotta say, you guys choked me up a little bit, so I appreciate that. I want to thank you all for sharing in this moment today. Thank you to all of our speakers and esteemed guests, and thanks to our crew, Reed, Victor, Christina, and Jeremy, as they get ready to embark on this journey. I'll ask all of my fellow astronauts to join us back up here. Come on up, everyone.
I love this office, and as you can see, we love each other. We need a picture. <laughs> One of our colleagues in space right now, Steve Bowen, likes to say human spaceflight is the ultimate team sport. When these four fly around the moon, they won't be doing it alone. They're part of a team, a team of astronauts, engineers, scientists, trainers, a team of support working around our country and around the globe, ready day and night. So we'll cheer them on. We will help them carry the incredible weight, and it's a heavy one, now laid on their shoulders, because we go together for all humanity. Thank you. When I was young, I had a poster of the Earthrise picture, the famous picture that was taken on Apollo 8. And the fact that it was a human behind the lens that made that picture so profound and changed how we all thought of our own home was so amazing to me. The moon is not just a symbol of thinking about our place in the universe. It's not just a symbol of exploration. It's actually a beacon for science. It's a beacon for understanding where we came from. You know, pushing ourselves to explore is just core to who we are. It's a part of being a human. That's our nature. We go out there and we explore to learn about where we are, why we are, understanding the big questions about our place in the universe. The exploration we're doing is the first few steps on the path of getting humans to Mars. The Artemis campaign of missions have set such an ambitious goal for humanity that it's inspiring contributions from around the globe. Not just one nation is inspired and moved by this, but nations from around the globe are coming together. When I look at the Artemis II crew with Victor, Christina, and Jeremy, they want to go do this mission. They are keenly driven. They are humble to a fault. It is so cool to be around them. Artemis II is a huge mission, but I hope we will look back and realize that this was one tiny step in humans on Mars and the sustained presence on our moon. Artemis II will be NASA's first crewed flight test of the Space Launch System rocket and Orion spacecraft around the moon. To verify today's capabilities for humans to explore deep space and pave the way for NASA's long-term human and scientific presence on the lunar surface. We are ready. We are going to the moon for all of humanity. We are artists. Fifty years ago, we pioneered a path to the moon. The trail we blazed cut through the fictions of science and showed us all what was possible. Today, our calling to explore is even greater. To go farther, we must be able to sustain missions of greater distance and duration. We must use the resources we find at our destinations. We must overcome radiation, isolation, gravity, and extreme environments like never before. 
These are the challenges we face to push the bounds of humanity. We're going to the moon to stay by 2024. And this is how. This all starts with the ability to get larger, heavier payloads off planet and beyond Earth's gravity. For this, we design an entirely new rocket. The Space Launch System. SLS will be the most powerful rocket ever developed. And with components in production. And more in testing. This system is capable of being the catalyst for deep space missions. We need a capsule that can support humans from launch through deep space and return safely back to Earth. For this, we've built Orion. This is NASA's next generation human space capsule. Using data from lunar orbiters that continue to reveal the moon's hazards and resources, we're currently developing an entirely new approach to landing and operating on the moon. Using our commercial partners to deliver science instruments and robotics to the surface, we are paving the way for human missions in 2024. Our charge is to go quickly and stay, to press our collective efforts forward with a fervor that will see us return to the moon in a manner that is wholly different than 50 years ago. We want lunar landers that are reusable, that can land anywhere on the lunar surface. The simplest way to do so is to give them a platform in orbit around the moon from which to transition. An orbiting platform to host deep space experiments and be a waypoint for human capsules. We call this lunar outpost Gateway. The beauty of the Gateway is that it can be moved between orbits. It will balance between the Earth and Moon's gravity. In a position that is ideal for launching even deeper space missions. In 2009, we learned that the Moon contains millions of tons of water ice. This ice can be extracted and purified for water. It can be separated in oxygen for breathing or hydrogen for rocket fuel. The moon is quite uniquely suited to prepare us and propel us to Mars and beyond. This is what we are building. This is what we're training for. This we can replicate throughout the solar system. This is the next chapter of human space exploration. Humans are the most fragile element of this entire endeavor. And yet we go for humanity. We go to the moon and on to Mars to seek knowledge and understanding and to share it with all. We go knowing our efforts will create opportunities that cannot be foreseen. We go because we are destined to explore and see it with our own eyes. We turn towards the moon now, not as a conclusion, but as preparation, as a checkpoint toward all that lies beyond. Our greatest adventures remain ahead of us. We are going. We're going. We are going. We are going. We're going. We are going. The history of this agency is marked with broken barriers, once viewed as impossible.